Hello, must do 0063 back to continue on with the Mega Man 10 Let's Play Perfect Run series. Last time we got a little damp after playing around in the sewers, so how's about we dry ourselves off by facing Solar Man? Ah, oh, yes, the obligatory fire based stage. What Mega Man game doesn't have one? Anyway, since there isn't an especially safe place to demonstrate these conveyors later, let me do so now. They push you along in the direction that the arrows are facing if you stand still, but you can fight against them and travel back in the opposite direction. Once again, introduced in a relatively hazardous area first up, just a couple of enemies around, no big deal, but as you might expect, combine them with pits or it's to kill lava areas, and they become a much greater deal. Those enemies, by the way, split apart if you don't kill them quickly enough, so it's almost always in your best interest to do so. And now we get attacked by solar power desk lamps. No, really. And we also have these fire distributors that send four fireballs out between the two exits. Once you have an appreciation for how the fireballs arc, they tend to just be more of a background loot to have to contend with for being a main threat themselves, but the addition of the other enemies does make things a little tricky. Not least because they can block your shots hitting the split apart enemies and the desk lamps. So try and find a safe spot and proceed with caution. Now the mid-boss of the stage, Suzak and Phoenix. They spend all their time chucking fireballs at you and Heatman style dashing towards you. When both are on screen, it's always the higher the two that chucks the fireballs. When you're down to just one, as each has their own separate health, they can chuck fireballs from a low position as well. You'd probably do well to try to spread the damage fairly evenly because, counterintuitively, you're better off having both around to avoid A, the remaining bird potentially flying at the top of the screen at a range ranges, and B, the fireballs launching from a lower position, where they seem to be slightly harder to avoid. Once again, having an appreciation of the asking the fireballs will come in very handy. Even though I'd like to think I've got that, it is still surprisingly easy to get burned, especially when the fireballs are launched from that lower position. Won't it be annoying if that's the only hit I take during this stage. So, time to combine the conveyors with the fire distributors. This first screen wasn't really a safe spot on the ladder, so just be prepared to leg it from the bottom conveyor when the fireballs aren't on screen. The second screen, the obvious enough safe spot is right in the middle of the two distributors, but you can also spend as much time as you want at the bottom of the ladder before plucking up the courage to go for it. So, okay, from this point onwards, the level definitely isn't screwing around. On this screen, we've got fire distributors, combined with conveyors, combined with lava pits. So that's nice. Just be patient with the fireballs and wait for a decent opening before progressing. Then after a certain point, you also have these split apart enemies and death lamps to worry about. And of course remember that the fireballs will block your shots. So be prepared, you have to wait around for a bit until the timing allows you to properly attack. Nasty screen, Matt. But don't breathe any sighs of relief just yet. This climbing section is fraught with danger. You can take either ladder here, there's a safe spot on each, but I prefer to take the right hand one where the safe spot is lower, and then leg it in one go. If you're really confident with your time, you can ignore this desk lamp, but generally I'd advise halting your climb to take it out. It's easily the safer option, and since I like to switch ladders at this point, I frankly might as well. This last climbing screen, I wait for the desk lamps to fire, climb to the safe spot, wait for the fireballs to go away, and then leg it. You have just enough time to avoid both the fireballs and the top desk lamp. And with that, the worst is thankfully over, level-wise at least. Just a few last missile launches and death lamps to deal with, none of which are especially threatening. Even this last one, which although can be defended by the fireballs, the safe higher ledge allows you to get well out of harm's way. So just take as much time as you need to kill it without taking any unnecessary risks. Solar Man is a boss fight that is probably going to take a while to get used to. I would imagine for most casual players, when not using weapon weaknesses, he'd probably be the most difficult Robot Master in the game. Admittedly, all he does is jump around and fire either one or two solar blades on the ground, which then put apart the contact, but trust me, these can be very difficult to avoid. The fight also drags on for a good spell because you can't just attack him all the time when he's on the ground. If you try to, he'll lower his head and block your shots. If you hit the flare on his head too much, it actually increases in size, making the solar blazes will then fire at you bigger, and of course harder to avoid. Personally, I like to try to attack when he's in the air as much as possible, he has no chance of blocking your shots then, though obviously he's a moving target at that point, so not always easy to hit. As for a dodging strategy, it's kind of difficult to describe. It might not quite appear as if it's what I'm doing here, 
but I find the best method is to stay on the middle ledge as much as possible. It actually turns out to be a surprisingly good spot to react to pretty much anything he does. Of course, when Soda's in the middle, that's not an option. So whatever side of the screen you find yourself on, be on the lowest vertical level and make your way to the middle when he jumps away. That's about all I can say, though. Trust me, this fight takes a long time to get good at. Well, there was a no damage run on Solar Man himself. Told you that mid boss mess up would be annoying, didn't I? For defeating Solar Man, we acquire Solar Blaze. It fires a solar flare horizontally a little distance away from you, and then splits apart. I'm not sure whether the intention is to use this thing to kill enemies positioned behind Mega Man, but that's an extremely hard concept for your brain to register on the spot. Most people are likely to just turn around and attack head on. So that, coupled with the delay of the solar flare splitting apart, makes this not a fabulously useful weapon, in my opinion. But regardless, another stage down. And as I've already just mentioned, only the one problem on the mid-boss, the same as with Blade Man. So once again, despite how difficult I just made out certain areas of the level, and Solar Man himself to be, all I needed to do was have a better time on the mid-boss. And since we're not talking grenade or aqua difficult level mid-boss, this wasn't too bad at all. Thanks for tuning in for the perfect run, where I'll once again be chiming in to talk about areas of the stage that caused me trouble. First few climbing screens though, not among them. They're very easy, nothing to worry about here. But one outtake on this screen. I was unnecessarily mucking around with these split apart enemies and came a cropper. Well, they're not directly in your way, best to just leg it past them. Suzak and Phoenix so they took off mishaps though. They're not so bad, but it's surprisingly easy to misposition yourself between their fireballs or miss time jumping over the bottom one when it dashes across the screen, like I almost did there. But on the outtake front, fireball related mess ups, thanks in no small part to their arc and trajectory, which I always have a hard time tracking. So the next set of climbing screens after the sub-boss are again pretty straightforward, since we're not dealing with multiple fireball distributors, but don't worry, the danger will start to heat up soon. Yeah, sorry, had to. And I'm sure to no one's surprise, a couple of failures on this screen. The fireball distributors in combination with the lamps can make this section a little awkward, particularly as you're forced to be on the same horizontal level as the lamps on a few occasions. And one last level outtake on this climbing section. The first couple of screens are okay, but the third can be very nerve-wracking. Find the initial safe spot and plan out what you want to do before setting off. Then, once you're ready, fully commit to the climb and don't second-guess yourself. From here on in though, it's pretty much plain sailing until the boss.
Solar actually only caught me out just the once, and I was expecting this to take a lot longer. Although perhaps I was just remembering how long it took for me to complete the Solar H challenge. More on that in the difficulty analysis. This is a rather strange fight. The key seems to be staying in or around the middle of the screen as much as possible, and of course reacting to where Solar jumps to. You also can't just go gung ho attacking him, because you'll almost certainly increase the size of the Solar Flare on his head, and make things much more difficult for yourself. So the whole thing is a bit of a softly softly approach, and any fight that drags on is always going to increase the chance of clumsiness, or just good old losing sight of the required dodging patterns. Nothing much else to say though, so enjoy what remains of the fight. So again, before the difficulty analysis, let's take a look at the harder version of the Solar Man fight. Although, unfortunately, only partially, as he actually has a move he never did during this fight. My apologies on Solar's behalf, and also for making you watch this somewhat drawn out fight for a third time. Unlike Blade and Pump, Solar is a significant step up in difficulty on hard mode. For one thing, the flare on his head is permanently large, so all the solar blazes and fire that you are more difficult to avoid. He can also jump all the way from one side of the screen to the other this time, firing three solar blazes in the process, you couldn't before. But it's another attack he gains that really causes problems. If he's at either edge of the screen, he can send three solar blazes up into the air, but then fall down on you and split apart when they reach your vertical level, not the ground. You need to skillfully jump over all three in quick succession, and it's very tricky to pull off. Again, apologies he never showed it off during this fight, but trust me, it will take most players a lot of practice to get good at dodging this move. And I so nearly pulled off a Solar H achievement here. He had two hits left before I messed up. Grrr. I have nightmares thinking back to my attempts to complete all the challenges and officially 100% this game. Solar H, defeat hard mode Solar Man with only the Mega Buster without taking damage, was the last one, and it took me, with my brother also lending a hand, the best part of three hours to pull off. We just could not get the hang of him. I specifically remember one attempt where I thought I had him, he was down to one HP, and I celebrated too soon. He dropped his head, blocked my shot, and I couldn't recover in time. Fantastic. Thankfully, though as I just demonstrated, so far the hard mode isn't too bad for me anymore, the normal mode version is considerably easier. So much so that I only needed 25 minutes to get a successful perfect run, which of course includes both the level and the Robot Master. Suffering just 7 outtakes along the way, with only the one on Solar himself. While a lot of the level is very nerve wracking, as long as you're patient you should be able to get through unscathed. That's not to say that some sections, particularly fireball generator ones, in combination with ladders and conveyor belts aren't a little tricky, but for the most part you have time to watch where the fireballs are going to arc from a safe distance before having to make your move. I certainly don't think the screens before Suzak and Phoenix, the bird's mid-boss, are anything to worry about, although I did have one very clumsy failure to split apart block enemies in this stretch. Suzak and Phoenix though, while they have a very predictable pattern, it is so easy to mess up on these bloody birds, either because you lose track of the safe spots between their fireballs, or because you miss time jumping over them when they flame charge across the screen. Testing yourself just to the side of being below the higher bird is probably your best bet. You should avoid any fireballs thrown at you from the higher bird, you have enough time to react to they flame charge across the screen, because you'll be a good distance away from the lower bird, and you'll be able to move easily to the middle of the screen should they swap to their higher, lower positions. Still though, it was me and not the birds that were squawking on two occasions. Past the mid-boss, all three remaining level outtakes were owing to impatience and or clumsiness while trying to get by the fireball generators. I think the long upward climb section is probably the trickiest set of fireballs to sneak through. They did for me on a couple of occasions, but I would reiterate what I said earlier. Take your time to get a grasp of where the safe spots are, and once you're all set, fully commit to your attempt to bypass them, and don't second-guess yourself. When it comes to the Robot Master, 
Solar can seem very intimidating, and on hard mode, oh boy is he ever, but actually on normal mode he's much more lenient. Ideally you want to position yourself a little bit away from him, but try and stay as close as you can to the middle bump in the floor. That should give you enough time to react to however far Solar chooses to jump, dodge the Solar blazes, and reposition yourself so that you're prepared for the next time he jumps. The other thing worth mentioning, strategy-wise, is that you don't want to be too gung-ho about attacking Solar. He'll drop his head from time to time, and if you shoot the Solar Flare on his head, then you'll charge it up, making it bigger and more difficult to avoid. It will reduce in size after a few seconds, so you won't permanently make things harder, but you still want to avoid this occurring at all. And that means you need to be careful with where and when you shoot. Only aim for Solar's body, not his head, and don't just keep peppering away. You'll need to pick and choose when to attack carefully. Once you get a rhythm down, he's not too bad, but getting into that rhythm, and indeed learning that rhythm to begin with, are not simple at all. So he'll likely give you a pretty stern challenge initially. Once again, a pretty good showing on my part, or at least I think so. I would not have expected this to take less than half an hour to pull off, and with only one mess up on a Robot Master, that can potentially cause a whole host of problems. Yeah, I was more than happy with that. So, not much variety in the stage ratings in this game at the moment, sorry about that. But looking at these stats, Solar, like Blade and Pump, also scores 2 out of 10 from me. It feels very much like my analysis of Blade stage, at least in terms of level. There are certainly a few tricky sections, but nowhere that I think would continually trip me up. Suzak and Phoenix are a challenge, but a very reasonable one, and nowhere near as annoying as the two other sub-bosses yet to come in this game. And the Fireball Generators, which I think pose the most difficulty in the level, are navigable with enough awareness and patience. Solar is a lot harder than Blade, but with only the one outtake, I just can't make a case for any higher a score. So, getting nearer and nearer to the end of these perfect runs, pending a decision on Mega Man 11, but it's still not quite yet time for me to chill out and relax. Another Robot Master awaits next time. See you then.